here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and thrilled to have you here with me today because we are going to be talking about reducing neck bands. They're also known as platysmal bands and look, I can really make them. Not as much as I used to though because I've been using four tips for probably three or four months that I think have really softened the platysmal bands in my neck. At my age, I'm going to have them, but getting them as soft as possible and as reduced looking as possible is always a good thing. But before I get into this video, I did want to show you the outfit and jewelry that I'm wearing today. These are some of my favorite pieces, very, very blingy. All of them are from Amazon, including the cargo pants and shoes. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll consider subscribing by hitting that little bell. That just sends you email notifications of my future videos and it's totally free. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be great too. Okay, I'm very excited to share the information in this video with you. I don't have before and after pictures, but I really do think that my neck has been looking better over time because I used to be able to really pull a lot of turkey neck skin and it's not nearly so bad. And I did want to introduce the sponsor for this video, which is the Sleep and Glow Pillow People. And I have used this Sleep and Glow back sleeping pillow for probably six or seven years. Absolutely love it because the best way to reduce wrinkles on your neck or anywhere on your face is actually to become a back sleeper. And I love this pillow because you can use it as a back sleeper, which I now do. I've trained myself to be a back sleeper, but it is also great if you are a side sleeper on either side, you can go ahead, there are divots on either side, and when you roll over on your side, and sometimes I do this in the middle of the night where, when I wake up and I can't sleep and I need to have that comfort of being in that little cocoon position, then I will sleep on my side and look at this. I have my total weight on this pillow and my face is not scrunched. I don't have wrinkles in this area, wrinkles in this area. It is absolutely a wrinkle-free way to sleep. And I truly believe that if you are not sleeping on a back sleeping pillow, if you are sleeping on your side just on a normal pillow, you are actually pressing those wrinkles into your face every single night. And that's eight hours, that's one third of your lifetime spent sleeping that you are pressing wrinkles into your face. And that is why I swear by the Sleep and Glow pillow. And watching that little video made me so happy because one of my best points in the day is when I lie down to sleep and I get to sleep on my Sleep and Glow pillow. It is absolutely super comfortable in addition to really producing much greater beauty, I truly do think. And I'll put the link below. This is the year's best deal at 15% off. Follow my link below and use discount code 50plusbeauty15 to receive that great discount. Okay, let's get into this and we're talking reducing platysmal bands. And I have to admit that maybe about six months to a year ago on my channel, you heard me complain pretty regularly about my neck and it just seemed to be getting worse and worse. Not just wrinkles this way and crepey skin, but it was also really getting those platysmal bands, these bands here, these vertical bands that were sticking out all over the place. And it's just a rather aging look and it just does not make you look relaxed either. And so at that point, I decided to look into what I was doing in terms of my lifestyle that might be creating those wrinkles. And one morning I was lying down doing my ab little machine that I have down in the workout room. And it's a machine that's a crunch machine where you just do this. And I did 150 crunches. And basically I was leading with my neck the whole time. And I realized that as I was doing the crunches, the platysmal bands in my neck were getting worse by the day. And I didn't just do 10 or 20 of them. I did 150 every single day, 50 to the center, 50 to the left, 50 to the right. But every one of them were causing those platysmal bands to pop and to look more prominent on my neck. And then I looked it up online and I'll link the article I found below in the description below the video. And it will tell you that when you're working out using weights primarily, but any kind of workouts, you really do need to look in the mirror and see if you're straining your neck and if those bands are popping, because if they are, you need to modify the exercise. And what I did to modify my ab crunches, I stopped doing them all together. And really, ever since I stopped that about two months ago, I really think that my neck has gotten much more soft looking and those bands really don't show up as much at all. And what I decided to do instead was to look up a standing ab workout. And when you put the weights on your shoulder and bring your knees up, you are really giving your abs a great workout 
while not causing your platysmal bands to increase in size. Now, tip number two is to tame your jowls with the right tools. And basically, in trying to tame these platysmal bands, I realized that every morning, and it used to be every evening as well, I was doing both of these little devices. And I truly love the jaw fit. And the jaw fit really exercises more your upper and middle cheeks and not so much your neck. I'll show you briefly how it works. You just go like this. Two, three, four, five. You do 20 of those with the position up to exercise this area and then you hold it until it burns. And then you do the same exercises down in your lower jaws. One, two, three, four, five, six. You do 20 again and then hold it till you get the burn. And that just really does firm up your middle cheeks and your jowls. And as you could see when I was doing it, it really did not put a lot of strain on my neck because my platysmal bands were largely staying smooth. And if you've watched my channel, you know that I really endorsed the use of the facial flex. But after I started realizing that my neck seemed to be getting worse and my neck bands seemed to be growing, I realized that this one puts too much strain on my neck and I took it out of my face workout. I'll show you how this one works. One, two, three. 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 And as you could see when I did it, it really caused a lot of tension in my neck and my platysmal bands were really working hard. And that is why I got rid of this. The jaw fit to me is the ultimate in working out your face muscles and your jowl area. But the facial flex puts a lot of tension on one's neck and I didn't think it was doing my platysmal bands and wrinkles there any favors. Now, my third tip is to smooth out your neck bands with a washa stone. And this is, I think, from Japan, somewhere in the Orient. But this comes in green jade and also rose quartz. Supposedly, the rose quartz has something to do with opening your heart. So I got it in rose quartz. And I think it's like $5. It is very inexpensive. But here's what I do with this stone. And I actually got this from a Dr. Brandt neck cream that I'm no longer using. But I really think that his addition of the Hua Sha Stone really helped his cream. And it certainly helps the creams that I use. And I will show you the creams that I use. I use the Multi-Action Sculpting Cream, which is from City Beauty. There that one is. And I still have a, a good amount left there. I keep going through it. But I just put it all over there. And the second thing I use is the City Beauty Invisicrepe Body Balm. And this helps reduce the crepe on your thighs, your arms, things like that on your body. But I saw another YouTuber, I can't remember who it was, but she did a wonderful set of before and after pictures on her neck. And actually I have one of those videos too on my channel. I'll try to link it below for you. This one is, is about gone, bottom of the jar type thing. But here we go. Oh, I'm getting it on my makeup. That's not good. At least I don't have makeup on my neck. And then what I do is once I get my creams on there, I go in with a gua sha stone and I just do three sets of five. It's very simple, very quick. I do one, two, three, four, five. And then the middle one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you have moisturizer all over your face, you can use this along your jawline like this and I don't really have much moisturizer there at all, so I'm not going to be really doing this. But I think it just removes the fluid that tends to pool there in your jowls, and I think over time, keeping that area fluid free, or at least as much as possible, really does help with the jowls, and I certainly think this little tool helps with the neck. Now, my fourth tip is to use some Differin. And Differin used to be prescription only, and it was for acne, teenagers primarily, but over the years, they've done some studies and they found out that it is just as effective as tretinoin in reducing wrinkles. At least they had a couple studies that did show this. But the advantage is it is non-irritating, so it can be used on your neck. And maybe about six months ago, I started using this on my neck and also on my hands. I think you may have seen that in the earlier video with the Sleeping Glow pillow. But I always put this on the backs of my hands and also on my neck. And it is just a wonderful little gel and I just use a pea size amount, rub it all over my neck, and actually, I put the creams on my neck, and then I put the different gel on my neck, and then after that, after I have all three of those things on there, I go in with the Gua Sha Stone, and it just feels good. And you know, when I first started feeling this, 
it was like I could feel like hard areas, like seemed like granule areas in there. I think maybe those bands get hardened over time, but now they feel a lot more soft and I really don't notice them. I feel like my whole neck is a lot more smooth since using the Gua Sha Stone. Okay, now my neck is a little red because I have all that blood, that healthy circulation going to my neck. And I think that's just wonderful. And that may be in part why the Gua Sha Stone seems to help so much. And again, it is totally reasonable in price. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And this thought is on avoiding loneliness. And what prompted me to share this with you is that I saw a Rich Roll podcast on YouTube yesterday, which I'll link below, in which he interviewed the U.S. Surgeon General. And remember Dr. Koop years ago had a smoking cessation initiative and he really made great inroads in reducing smoking in our society? Well, Dr. Vivek Murthy, I don't know if I said his name right, but he is the U.S. Attorney General. His mission, his primary mission during his term is to reduce loneliness because he says loneliness is rampant in our society. Studies show about 50% of people are lonely and loneliness has terrible effects on your health. In fact, they say the risk factor for someone who is lonely is equal to someone who smokes 15 cigarettes a day. That loneliness hurts all aspects of our health. And if you've gone through it, as I have in my past, it is no fun at all. It feels terrible. And loneliness seems to breed loneliness because when you're lonely, even though you'd like to reach out, a lot of the time it hurts your self-esteem and you think, oh, they probably wouldn't want to hear from me. I don't want to bother anyone. So you get lonelier and lonelier and more and more isolated. Well, if you are one of the 50% of us who also deals with issues of loneliness, I hope you go and watch that video because he has a lot of good advice for all of us to help deal with this. But one thing he said is, Basically, people used to call each other. Well, they used to see each other in real life and then they used to call each other. And now it's down to text or seeing the people that you love or like on Facebook. And that's really kind of a fake type of intimacy. He says to make yourself a list of the people that you would like to reach out to. And then maybe several times a week, go ahead and give them a call. He said nine times out of 10, they're surprised but very grateful to hear from you because 50% of the time they're lonely too and they would welcome your phone call. And I have decided to just do it as Nike says and I have made myself a rule that every week I will reach out to three people on my list. And so I will let you know down the road how that is going for me. So let me know in the comment section if you'd like to know the results of that, if I think it helps or it didn't help, because I think loneliness is an area that really affects us all. And basically loneliness or solving loneliness starts at home. And if each of us do just a little bit to reach out to others, little by little by little, the society will become much less lonely and you will feel a lot more love and connectedness in your life. Well, that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.